The Minus Forum UM790 Pro is an absolute beast and somehow fits in your pocket. At only 0.8 litres, this thing is over 56 times smaller than a standard Mitera, and somehow they managed to cram in a Ryzen 9 processor. It supports up to 64GB of RAM and has space for two Gen 4 NVMe SSDs. This thing is just ridiculous. So let's take a closer look and see if this thing's right for you. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the UM790 Pro, which I imagine you guessed from the intro. This is by far the most powerful mini PC I have ever used. In fact, it's so good, it's actually better than the PC I use to edit these videos, but we'll come back to that later. The model I have here is the bare bones model, which means I have to supply my own RAM and SSDs. It comes with the AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS, which is 8 cores and 16 threads, and comes with Radeon 780M graphics, so not discrete, it's all built in one chip. Taking off the top lid, you'll see a few things. You'll see a couple of warnings from the manufacturer telling you to not take off the cooler, and you'll also get the instruction manual. First impressions. It's pretty nice. It's very small, not too heavy, and it's this nice shade of bluey grey which doesn't really attract fingerprints, so that's good. On the front you have the power button, two USB 4s, both in Type-C, a headphone microphone jack, and the BIOS reset button. On the back you've got your power jack, two HDMIs, 2.5 gig LAN, and four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. As you can see there's plenty of ventilation, on both the left and right side, and underneath. In the accessories box, you get two extra rubber feet, a heatsink for your RAM if you've got the bare bones kit, an HDMI cable, an AC power cable, and a power brick delivering up to 120 watts. You also get a VASER adapter if you want to put it on the back of your monitor. To get inside, you're going to have to pull off those rubber feet, and let me tell you, these are glued on very strong, so don't be afraid to force it. Once you pull them off, they're not very sticky afterwards, so be careful. Thankfully, and this is a really nice touch, the screws are very long, so they're harder to misplace if you drop them. Once your screws are out, put a flat head in this tiny spot here and be gentle. There's three cables you need to be aware of. The easiest one to remove is this fan right here. So unplug that and then you can flip over the top all the way. You get a pretty thick heat sink for your two NVMEs, which is a nice touch, and a fan to dissipate heat. At the top you got two RAM slots, and at the bottom you got two slots for NVMEs. For RAM I'm using 32GB of Crucial Sodium RAM, running at 5600MHz. And for the NVMe I'm using Crucial P3 Plus, only 500GB, but you can have as much as you want. And setting the RAM is really easy, just put in the bottom stick first and make it click, and do the same with the top slot. Now at this point I forgot to add the heat spreader for the RAM, so I believe you add it in between the two RAM sticks. But it ran fine in all my tests. You can use either NVMe slot, they're both the same, and don't forget to peel off your heatsink sticker and reattach those cable headers. Screw everything back in and you should be good to go. Minus from give you a graphical BIOS, which is a nice change, it looks pretty good. The RAM's at 5600MHz straight out of the box, which is really nice, you don't need to play with any settings. You can also change the power limiter, but I just kept mine at auto. Unfortunately, there's no fan controls, so you can't have any custom fan curves or anything like that. Testing out some 4K video, it performs perfectly as you'd expect. Just five drop frames, which is right at the start of the video, but it plays perfectly. So if you wanted to use this as a, like a little media center, this would be perfect. On Geekbench 6, there's a single core score of 2059, which is just under a 5800X3D, which is insane. And for the multi-core score, it scores just under the Ryzen 9 5950X, which I'm having a really difficult time believing, but there you go. The graphics score is obviously going to be low because it's not a discrete graphics card. But somehow, this thing is on par with, roughly, a GTX 980. And when I saw these numbers, I was shook. I cannot believe a mini PC, this tiny little PC, is on par with the GTX 980. Inside the CPU, it's not even a discrete graphics card. It's a synthetic test, so real world figures might be a bit different, but 
Oh my god. Here's the time spy score if you were interested. And I'll shut up now. Let's see how it does in some games. So overall, what do I think? Well, I think it's really good. As you can see, it's very quiet. It actually plays games. Maybe not the latest AAA games, but if you're anything like me, every game I play is over 10 years old. So yeah, I really do recommend this thing. If you want to pick one up and the components, I've got links in the description. Subscribe for more small computer content, and I'll see you in the next video.